Hello, my name is Farron Glenfield. I'm the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Ada, a diocese which covers counties Cavan, Leitrim, Sligo, Roscommon and Longford, and parts of Fermanagh, Donegal and Westmeath. I'm speaking to you from an old railway bridge over the River Erne in Cavan, not too far from my home. And I think you can see the new road bridge in the background. The COVID-19 crisis has been a bridge too far for so many people. It's disrupted our daily lives. It's devastated businesses. It's denied us the ability to meet together as families and for sporting occasions and also for church. And it's brought illness, fear and death to many doors. Our diocese is recording these Sunday services, which are available online, to act as a bridge. A bridge bringing scattered and isolated lives together. A bridge that we can come to God through Jesus Christ. And so can I invite you to join in our worship with the words of the hymn writer, O oh, worship the King, O oh, glorious above, O oh, gratefully sing his power and his love, our shield, our defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned with splendor and girded with praise. Join in, enjoy, and God bless. The Lord be with you and a very, very good morning to you. Welcome to Colry Parish Church on this Sunday, the 21st of June, Father's Day, and uh, also an opportunity for a diocesan service to focus on the work of mission, particularly through the work of CMS Ireland. I'm delighted to be able to uh, play a part in this service and really, really grateful to uh, Archdeacon Craig McCauley for all the hard work he's invested in over these months making each of these uh, 10 o'clock diocesan services a really special uh, joint collaboration. Verse of scripture from the reading that you're gonna have later on from Isaiah. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. Friends, we've come together to worship God for his greatness, power and glory to praise and thank him for his goodness and love to us, and especially for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to be our saviour, to hear his holy word and to pray for his forgiveness, help and guidance. So we're going to begin our worship by singing the hymn through all the changing scenes of life, number 372 in the Red Church Hymnal.
morning's liturgy is taken from different provinces of the Anglican Church in Africa. We should always humbly admit our sins before God, but especially when we meet together to give thanks for the great benefits we have received from him, to praise and worship him, to hear his holy word and to ask what is necessary for our bodies and souls. Therefore, let us come before the throne of our gracious God and say together, Almighty God, creator of all, you marvellously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbours. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth. Remove your sins from you. As far as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Well, at this stage, we're going to go uh, now for a, a Zoom interview that was recorded the other day with Archbishop Massimango Katanda, the Archbishop of the province of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Bishop of Kindu. So we're very privileged today to um, have an opportunity to talk to Archbishop Massimango Katanda. Um, Archbishop, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us and uh, for sparing some time when I know you have many pressing concerns at the moment. Uh, it's very good of you to be here. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, we, we remember, a, a number of us, your happy visit to the diocese in 2018. Yes. And uh, yes. on that occasion, you met all of the clergy, you stayed with Bishop Ferrin, you visited um, Cavan yes. Royal School, isn't that right? And also yes. Sligo Grammar School. I remember, yeah. You visited Sligo yes. University Hospital, and uh, there were some yes. lovely occasions to meet different people in the community, as well as in the churches. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much yes. for coming on that occasion. Okay. We understand mm -hmm. that you were coming to the Lambeth Conference uh, this summer, and we're going to yes. come to Ireland after that. But sadly, that has been postponed. So, yeah. Archbishop, may I, may I ask you, where are you now? Uh, that's a good question. I am in my office, in the diocesan office in Kindu, in Kindu, the headquarters of the diocese, uh, because when the coronavirus uh, was outbreak, I was here in Kindu and could not move. So I'm, I'm, I'm home. <laughs> and Kindu yeah. is quite a big city, isn't it? It's a quarter of a million people, isn't that right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, and uh, you, mm. as well as the coronavirus, um, th there has been some very severe flooding. Yes, in 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 the Democratic Republic of Congo, the coronavirus started in Kinshasa, the capital city, where today the number is four thousand and eight hundred. You can check in uh, online, but here yeah, in Kindu, there is zero zero case for the moment. Why you know okay. Kindu is very luck is is lock land. Yeah. They cancelled all all flights in and out Kindu. So we are isolated completely. And has it been difficult getting supplies to Kindu if you've been cut off from the rest of the country? Uh yes, because uh the government allow uh the cargo cargo flight to bring uh goods like food and uh, from Congo River also, we can get rice, bananas. So we, we don't have a problem of food uh, just now. 
but we have the problem of getting fuel. So can you tell us then that the Congo River flooded recently and what was the effect of that? Yes, the Congo River flooded, uh, which reached seven meters, seven meters high. Seven meters so high. Wow. Most of the houses, yeah, most of the houses you saw when you were in Kindu along the river was covered by water. All the houses. Mm. Yeah. And the people um, was the, people flew to the schools and the churches for at least one month. But now the water is coming down slowly and the people are trying to recover. But they need to reconstruct the houses, which is the big challenge they are facing now. So um, you, you were communicating through CMS that there are um, there is need to support 300 families. In the beginning, there was a high need of um, hygienic uh, assistance because we have in, in coronavirus time, they need to be protected and they, they need um, items like soaps uh, or uh, sheets to cover where they are uh, sleeping. And also uh, they need uh, some hygienic materials uh, to use for water, jerry can, and also the children need to be covered by um, second end clothes. So that was the need uh, for the beginning. But now, as the water is coming down slowly, the, the need is still there, but there is another need of um, helping them to start to rebuild the house. They need to make their own bricks. You need um, bricks with... And they also they need um, some support to, to protect from the rain. The, that is, is the dry season now. The sun is very, very strong. Uh, they need um, more sheets to cover uh, the house be, be, before they can get um, um, iron sheets, which is very expensive here. Mm. Thank you very much for, for mentioning that. C can I ask um, if there's... Um, we were very inspired to read of the message that you gave to your clergy talking about the importance of mission and especially during the time of lockdown when churches um, and uh, people's lives were being disrupted. Can you tell us what, it, yeah. what are you saying to your clergy now? What, what's your message to your leaders now? As soon as uh, the coronavirus outbreak and the government stopped it, um, for church going and schools, I met all the clergy together and uh, I tell them that this is a mission opportunity for us. It's not the end of the mission, but the beginning of the mission now. So we equip each pastor with a short training how to do mission in this time of lockdown. And uh, we, we we, we divided the town in 29 cells, 29 cells, identifying the houses of some um, Christians who can host 20 people. And we did, and it's going very well. And we set them to invite those who are not Anglicans because the neighbors, and now I tell you, it's working very, very, very well. And the, the other things we did, we asked each pastor to be more open in social assistance, the solidarity. When people saw the solidarity, this is the sign of a Christian, a true Christian. So they are doing what they can do um, to neighbors, to elders, to um, to vulnerable people. So I think it's going very well and we will have a meeting next week for the follow-up. 
Can I ask Archbishop um, if there's anything in particular that you'd like us to pray for you? And um, in doing that, can I also ask you about how the Bible school is, is, is getting on? The Bible school was closed for the moment yeah. uh, because the government could not allow us to, to, to have people in school. So we'll start, I think, um, in 2021 or 22 June. Um, so we need your prayer on that. And again, you see, we need prayer for those pastors in these big cities like Kindu. They used to live by offering. Each Sunday, people bring food to the pastor. They, they collect food, wood, rice. But now nothing is happening now. So they are a little bit in difficult time. So please pray for them so that they can keep high the standard as pastors. And also we need prayer for Kindu Town. We are now free for coronavirus, but I don't know what will happen tomorrow. So please continue to pray for uh, this area so uh, God can continue to protect us from coronavirus because it will be a disaster. Because here there is nothing, nothing as if the system is working. We will certainly do that. Archbishop, thank you so much for sparing the time to talk to us. And uh, it's really inspiring to hear from you and to hear about what you've been doing and how you've been leading your people uh, at this very, very strange time. We're inspired by you. We really respect you very much and we will continue to pray for you and, uh, and endeavour to express that love and respect in tangible ways as well. Well now Faith Sithole is going to read the psalm, Psalm 86, and following that Margaret Crawford, diocesan reader, is going to bring our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah 42 and 43. Hello everybody, my name is Faith, Faith Sithole. I'm originally from Zimbabwe, which is the southern part of Africa, and I've lived in Ireland for over 20 years. I am part of this wonderful group of parishes called the Virginia Group of Parishes, and today I am going to read you, to you Psalm 86. This psalm reminds me of five years ago when my father was in St. Anne's Hospital in Zimbabwe. The morning before the Lord called him home, we did a devotion on Psalm 86. So I so love it, it's so special to me, and I'm also wearing a scarf that he bought me. So everything is special and wonderful. As I read, you can follow the words on the screen, or you can just listen to the words that I'm going to read. The words come from Psalm 86, verses one to 10, and then 16 and 17. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Preserve my soul, for I am faithful. Save your servant, for I put my trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long, gladden my soul, Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayers and listen to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my distress, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you. O oh Lord, nor any works like yours. All nations you have made shall come and worship you, O oh Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are the great for you are great and do wonderful things. You alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. 
Give me your strength. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favor that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O oh Lord, have helped and comforted me. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. My name is Margaret Crawford. I'm a diocesan reader, and I come from the Swadland Bar group of parishes. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 5 to 9, and chapter 43, verses 1 to 3a, as the New International Version. This is what God the Lord says, He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before the spring into being, I announce them to you. But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. It's a pleasure to share in your service today, and I would like to thank Bishop Ferron for his kind invitation. In this mission service, I would like us to think about who we are as God's church. Across the world, we're living in extraordinary times. In 2019, who could have imagined the changes that we're all now experiencing? The impact of this global pandemic is sending shockwaves through all our lives. Jobs and incomes have been lost and our whole way of life is changed. Many are grieving for loved ones. The economy is faltering and health services are stretched as never before. It is estimated that 20% of people are experiencing clinical levels of anxiety, worrying times for us all. Perhaps you have found, as I have, that Bible passages are coming alive in a new way. The Psalms are imbued with new relevance. I cling more firmly to God's promises and the comfortable words of Scripture, and prophecies from the Old Testament resonate with new relevance. Isaiah reminds us of God's promises and his faithfulness in tough times. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. This is a promise for each one of us. And from the passage we heard in our reading today, from Isaiah chapter 42, we read this. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. These are wonderful promises for worrying times. But the promises for us are given to us as God's chosen people, his church, and are followed on with a commission to all of us as his church. We read, I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open eyes that are blind, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. We live in a world spoilt by sin and brokenness that God is yearning to redeem and renew, and he has chosen us, his church, to work with us and through us to bring about restoration and wholeness. This is what mission is. It is reflecting God's love to those around in very practical ways, supporting our neighbours through these tough times, using our time, skills and resources to help others, and letting folks know that we have a saviour who longs for them to know him too. Church is who we are. Mission is what we are called to do. Across the world, God's church, our family, is at work. In a fast-changing world, God is steadfast and unchanging. But he's also constantly at work doing new things and as we read in Isaiah chapter 43, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? And then he says, I will make a way in the desert and so on. We need to be on the lookout for the new things God is doing here and across the world. The ways he is creating wonderful things from the pain, the anxiety, fear and even death that we are all experiencing at the moment. Let us resolve as his church to work with him and to look out for signs of hope and renewal. Surely this is our calling, to stand witness to the redeeming power of the risen Christ. 
to watch out for signs of redemption and hope in our own communities, to witness God at work across the world in this generation, at this extraordinary moment. I've asked Linda to share with you news of how our church family in the Democratic Republic of Congo is seeking to live out their missional calling as his part of that family there. CMS Ireland has strong links with four dioceses in DR Congo, a country torn by civil unrest, impoverished by international exploitation and struggling with recent outbreaks of Ebola and measles. It is in this challenging context that the church ministers and witnesses. Let me hand over to Linda. Thank you. Kindu Diocese in the Democratic Republic of Congo is led by Archbishop Massimango and is connected with Kilmore Elfin and Arda Diocese through parish links and various visits that he's made to Ireland over the years. In recent years, CMS links have partnered with Kindu Diocese, firstly when they wanted their par- pastors to purchase bicycles, which would help them visit their rural parishes. And then the Archbishop also asked us to support ordinance to get hold of vestments so that they could graduate and be ordained into ministry. Without these, they would have had to delay their ordinations by about six months. Most recently, the diocese has been working alongside rural communities to improve their school buildings. So far, CMS has been able to support two schools for improvement of their facilities. On the 2nd of April this year, I received a message from Archbishop Massimango referencing a crisis situation. Now, we were already in the midst of COVID-19 at that stage, so it was quite a shock when the crisis in Kindu turned out to be something else entirely. The Congo River had burst its banks and an estimated 4,000 people had been made homeless by flooding in Kindu. You can see from these photos sent by Archbishop Massimango how horrifying the situation had become. In the next couple of weeks, the Archbishop sent another message to say this. The church is lobbying the government to assist so many affected by the flooding, but they're already overloaded by the fight against COVID-19. Governments and huge relief agencies have to focus on the emergency that faces them. And right now, of course, that emergency is COVID-19. And it's right and good that they do that. But the church is different because we are a body made up of individuals dotted around the local neighbourhoods of the globe. And we are also different because we are equipped to do more than flatten the curve, more than provide better shelter for a certain number of families. In the call to be a good neighbour, Jesus urges us, the church, to be at the centre of seeing individual needs and responding with a message of hope that's spelled out in many different ways. Because we can be responsive in partnership and because the church is at the centre of community mission in Kindu, CMSI hopes to respond to the flooding crisis which Kindu has been experiencing. We hope to be able to stand with Archbishop Massimango and the Diocese of Kindu as they seek to assist 300 families who've been made homeless by the flooding. The assistance that they want to give includes plastic sheeting, so that people can build themselves shelter and then some soap and jerry cans, water containers, so that they can have a clean water supply. This enables families to maintain some level of hygiene to protect them from both Ebola and C-19. It costs around €25 to provide this for one family. But it also includes visitation and prayer and ongoing connection with a body of Christ-minded people who will provide neighbourly responses to the challenges ahead for each and every family. And we here are part of that wider church family. Therefore, in this global crisis, let us be a global church standing with each other in prayer and reaching to the specific needs of each person by supporting local churches in their mission. And I want to hand over to Archbishop Masi Mango. We are church, we are one family, 
let's support one another and bring hope to our communities. Thank you. We now affirm our faith together with Christians all over the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, at this stage, we're going to uh, allow uh, people from the CMS family to lead us in our prayers. Almighty and merciful God, we give thanks for your church throughout the world. Thank you that we are part of a global family of faith that is much bigger than ourselves. Thank you that we belong together as one united body. We pray that you would strengthen the bonds of friendship and love that we share across the world. Please help us to care more deeply for one another, to listen more carefully to one another, to share more generously with one another. Help us to grow together. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope and peace that only you can bring. Almighty and merciful God, we pray for our nations. We pray particularly for all those countries where the wider CMSI family is at work. We pray for Burundi. For the Democratic Republic of Congo. For Egypt. For Ireland. For Kenya. For Nepal. Rwanda, for South Sudan, for Uganda, for United Kingdom, for Zambia. Amen. We pray that you would guide and bless our political leaders, our healthcare workers, and all who strive to keep us safe and provide for our needs. O oh, gracious God, we humbly ask you would bring the end to the suffering of our people, whether from COVID-19 or from any other things that are causing pain and despair at this time. Help us, your people, to shine brightly in this present darkness we are your church we are one family help us to share the love hope and peace that only you can bring almighty and merciful god we pray for our own churches and dioceses. We ask you to bless each parish and congregation. During this period of isolation and separation, may you draw us more closely together. Help us discover new ways to worship together, 
to learn together and to bless one another. So us, Lord, how to love and serve one another more effectively in our local churches. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope, and peace that only you can bring. Almighty and merciful God, we pray today for the most vulnerable members of our own societies, particularly those whose their struggles are magnified in this period of lockdown. We pray for all who are sick, whether as a result of COVID-19 or other health conditions. May they experience your healing touch and know that you are with them. We pray for those who are grieving. May they know your comfort and strength. We pray for those who are living in extreme poverty, those who are struggling to make ends meet at a time of reduced support and care. May you provide for their needs and bring your hope in the midst of their despair. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated. May they know your presence and your companionship. We pray for those struggling with mental health issues and addictions. May they know your peace, which passes all understanding. We pray for vulnerable children in our care systems. May they know the stability and security that you bring through your relentless and unconditional love. We pray for those who have been uprooted and displaced from their homes. May they experience your welcome and your loving embrace. We pray for all who continue to experience the horrors of violence and war. May they know your protection and may you bring lasting peace to their lands. We are your church. We are one family. Help us to share the love, hope and peace that only you can bring. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came through death, that we might have life in all its fullness. Amen. prayers into one, we use the familiar words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Call it for the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Well, we join in our final hymn, the Robin Mark hymn, You're the Lion of Judah, the Lamb that was slain. Of the 
age when the earth you reclaim You will gather the nations before you And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified For with wisdom and mercy and justice he reigns at the Father's side And the angels will cry For the world ruling part And the earth will reply You shall reign As the king of all kings And the lord of all lords There's a sword at our side There's a fire in our spirit that cannot be denied As the Father has called us for these you have died For the nations that gather before you And the ears of all men need to hear of the Lamb who was crucified Who descended to hell yet was raised up to reign at the Father's side And the angels will cry Slain for the world, ruling part, and the earth will reply, You shall reign as the king of all kings and the lord of all lords, and the angels will cry, Hail the land who was slain for the world. will reply, you shall reign as the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. Our diocesan 2020 prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to catch your vision for these dioceses and for our parish. But to catch your vision, we must first listen to you. Too often, we leave you out. Forgive us. Help us to catch a sense of where your spirit is leading. Give us courage to love and serve you. Give us boldness to proclaim Christ faithfully and to build your kingdom. Lord, come to us. Our door is open. Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes we set on the risen Christ. So may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.